we can have you all tune in and join us and be a part of this wonderful service. We also want to take this time to let you all know that we appreciate all those that have been making these live broadcasts a priority by tuning into each live. And for those that have been sharing it also, we appreciate that. And we just want to encourage you to continue to be a part of our service, comment, let us know how you all are doing. Uh, let us know that how this live broadcast has been a blessing to you. We just want to open up this evening with just singing a couple songs and giving God the praise and just worshiping Him in the beauty of His holiness. We thank God that we can worship Him every day of our lives and for giving us that freedom of worship and in His presence. It says that, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not. 
Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you, oh God, for this other opportunity that we can come into your halls and to just bless the name of the Lord because you are good, you are good Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just always being there for us, oh God, and for your hands upon our lives, for leading us and directing us, oh God. We just ask, oh God, that you would just move in a mighty way. Continue, Lord Father, to just be with your people. Give us the strength, oh God, the wisdom in this time. Lord Father, help us, oh God, not to grow weary, but to continue to hold on to your promises and to your word, oh God, and look, Lord Father, for the day that you will be coming for us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for all that you have done. And we just commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And we know we serve a great and a mighty God. And he says that, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And that is the God that we serve. A great God, a mighty God. And there is nothing impossible with him tonight. So continue to put your faith and your trust in him. Our God is greater.
wants us to be this evening. So, it's fun. so I want to encourage you to invite God's presence into your life.
reminded us of worship this afternoon. Again, welcome to the second life for today. We're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us, to praise and to bless this holy day. I trust that you've had a good day so far. Great lunch, time to take up a rest and you are refreshed in the presence of the Lord. I want to shout out to some viewers this afternoon and giving a shout out to the Mangrove family. We know that you're always looking on and uh, uh, Janelle Ramla, God bless you and Joan Bisnat, all right. And also Pastor Winston Mahabir. Uh, we're so glad that you guys are on the program this afternoon. I want to share with you on the subject from fear to faith. I have been uh, sharing quite a while on this particular series. What a wonderful, powerful series. And I trust that your hearts have been blessed because this is very real. Uh, it's something that uh, is prevalent today, fear. But God wants to change your position, wants to change your situation wants to bring you from a position of fear to one of faith. Remember what John says? Faith is the victory. God wants you to live in victory. He wants you to live in power. He wants you to live in an anointing. Praise God. And so the book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verses 10 have been our text verse for this series. So I invite you to turn there. Isaiah chapter 41 and verses 10. And I'm going to read God's word from the King James Version. Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Ye I will help thee, ye I will hold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What does God say? Fear not. Why? Because he is with thee. Praise God. You can hold on to that now, you can hold on to that tomorrow. You can hold on to that for the rest of your life. You know that your God is with you. Glory to God. I'm thanking the Lord for that verse. Would you join with me in prayer? Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this life that is coming. Dear Lord, uh, to the people wherever they are today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that we can, we can do this so that people, dear Lord, can receive your word. Their Father will strengthen and will build them and that will encourage them, dear Lord. We need this. We need this because we are surrounded by all kinds of news. The news out there seems to be sometimes so depressing, dear Lord. But dear Father, your word is uplifting, inspirational, encouraging. And that's what we need today. Thank you for blessing the message as always. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Talking about fear in a small country church just a, a few minutes before the service started, the congregation was sitting and they were chatting. When all of a sudden, Satan appeared at the front of the church. And so the people started screaming and running for the front entrance, trampling on each other in a frantic effort to get away from the evil one. Soon the church was empty except for one elderly gentleman who calmly sat in his pew without, move, without moving. And so it seems that he was oblivious to the fact that uh, God's ultimate enemy was in his presence. So Satan walked up to this man and said to him, Listen, don't you know who I am? And the man said, Yes, I certainly know who you are. But Satan said to him, Well, aren't you afraid of me? And the man replied, No. I ain't afraid of you. And so Satan said, but don't you realize that I can kill you just with one word? The man said, no doubt. No doubt. I know that you can, you can do that. But don't you know that I can cause you profound, horrifying agony for all eternity? The man says, yes, I know that as, as well. But then Satan was back and said, well, well, why aren't you not still afraid of, of, of me? The man said, well, I am not afraid of you because I have been married for your sister, to your sister for 48 years. But putting all joke and aside, fear is indeed real. As I've said before, that I believe that it's a strategic weapon that the devil has launched upon planet Earth during this time. Wherever you go today, you see people are living in fear. 
Uncertainty surrounds us, not knowing the future, not knowing our well-being. For some people, not knowing where their next meal is going to come from. For some people, not, not knowing how I'm going to pay my bills. For some people, they do not know if they are going to recover. Right now, you might be faced um, with pains in your body. Right now, you might be faced um, uh, with uh, some other situation. And you says, I, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're surrounded by fear. God comes to you today and said, listen, do not be afraid because I am with uh, you. The thing about fear, it makes prisoners uh, of us. But faith in God will set you free. Praise God. Faith in Jesus will make the difference. Will loose the prisoners. Will break the shackles and the chains and the bondages. If you have faith in God. This is what Jesus said to his disciples. Have faith in God. And if you have such faith in God, you can even say to the mountains that surround you. The mountains um, that are in your way, the mountains of oppression, you can say to those mountains of infirmities, uh, you can say to it to be cast into the sea. And Jesus said, if you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe the things uh, which you are praying about, uh, you are going to receive, praise God, have faith in God. Uh, fear is a terrible thing. A man who had faith for 32 years. That's a long time. Hiding for 32 years. That is what fear will do to you folks. It will cause you to hide. Yes. And so for 32 years, he was fearing the punishment of the pro-Nazi wartime activity. Says he used to cry when he heard happy voices outside. How much that he, he, he wanted to be outside, but fear kept him inside. And so he dared not show himself. Um, even at his mother's own funeral, he did not attend because of fear. So Janice Roos was a young shoemaker when he went into hiding at his sister's farmhouse uh, in June 1945. He was found years later after she brought a large supply of bread to the nearby village of Zalna. If it had not been, if I had not been discovered, he said, I would have remained in hiding. He said, I am so, so happy that this happened. And so throughout those years, this man did absolutely nothing but just to hide, to shun everybody, to shun the outside world. He was so fearful of the pro-Nazi wartime. And so he never left his house. All he could do from his hiding, from his little house up there, all he could do is to look down uh, to the village, uh, stare at the village. Uh, that's all that he did for all these years. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that one of the characteristics uh, of the last days uh, is fear. I want you to pay attention. That's why I'm saying today that Satan has launched this massive weapon that has gripped the entire planet at this time in an unprecedented scale today. And that is the weapon of fear. Listen to what Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 21 and verses 26. Men's hearts fearing them for fear. Men's heart will give up, will give way. There will be heart attacks, heart failures, cardio arrest. For what? What is the reason? What is the primary reason? It is fear. And looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven itself shall be shaken. Folks, there is that shaking that has begun on a global scale. All over the world there are shakings. If it is not the COVID, it is something else. It is earthquakes or it is volcano uh, uh, eruptions that are taking place. It is wars. Uh, you name it. Uh, the world is in a state uh, of unrest. Um, Jesus said prior to his coming um, that the powers of heaven itself uh, would be shaken. These are the days that we are living in. Um, however, 
in the light of what is taking place today, we must learn. If there is one thing that God wants us to learn right now, in this present time, is to learn to trust Him, because that's the only thing that is going to keep you through this difficult time that we are facing. Not only you, but your family as well, and your church as well. We got to learn to trust God as we have never before in our lives. Whatever the circumstances are, whatever may happen in our lives, we must learn to trust in the Lord. You have to understand that nothing is outside of God's control. Even today, in this world of chaos and pandemonium, my God is in control and He is still on the throne. And folks, I believe with all my heart that my Jesus is is in control of the circumstances that is coming my way presently. I'm convinced that He's in control of the circumstances that has come your way right now. And what might be tomorrow, we do not know what tomorrow will bring forth. But I know that my God is in control. He's already there in my tomorrow. He's, he's already there in my next week and my next month and next year. The Lord with the tarry folks. Uh, yes, sir. And He is in control. He is in charge. Man is not in charge. I want you to know that. He might think that He is in charge, uh, but my God is in charge. Uh, devil might want to think too that He is in charge. Uh, he is having a feeling. But I want you to know that my God, my Jesus, is uh, in charge. Uh, and He is able, and more than able, I see to you tonight. Uh, Cause everything that is coming your way right now to work it together for good. Praise God. He is the great table turner. That's who our God is. He wants to show you how much that He loves you. Even during this time, folks, that if you were to focus upon the Lord, you will know how much that He loves you and how much that He cares for you. The Bible gives us the assurance and the guarantee that all will work for the good, will work for the better, will work for the best to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. You see, there's nothing in this world and there's nothing that is happening right now that can defeat you as a child of God and as a believer in Jesus Christ. What you know that you are surrounded by the love of God. Hallelujah. You are special in the eyes of the Lord. Some of you may have heard of about the great preacher, John Wesley, that great reformer. And he too experienced uh, at times in his life certain fears. Uh, To be honest with you folks, uh, I too have uh, been to that place um, and experienced in fear. And that's what I'm preaching to you because I know it is real. In fact, it is so real that the Bible says uh, that fear actually is a spirit. uh, it's a spirit from Satan. Yes, sir. That is how real that fear is. It is not something imaginary, folks. No. But fear is real. And so the preacher John Wesley, when he at times would be afraid, you know what he did? And I think, folks, that we need to hear this today because this certainly, indeed, is one of the remedies uh, for fear and how you can deal with the fear right now in your life. And so when he felt afraid, he took time out. I know what he did. He did two things that started with the, with the letter P. And that is number one, he prayed. And number two, he prays. I said it again. Prayed and he prays. Glory to God. This is exactly what the Bible tells us. You remember what Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says. Let your request be made known unto God. Yes, you talk to God about your problems. Talk to God about what is happening in your life. Talk to God about your fears. Talk to God about your anxieties. And so as you talk to God and as you pray, the Bible says, as you let the request be known unto God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, human understanding, human reasoning, will keep 
what? Notice what it says, your heart. The devil wants to get your heart. That's why it goes, yes. And so the Bible says that God will keep your heart, praise God, amen. Keep you intact, keep you from falling apart, keep you strong, glory to God. And the scripture further says, it says, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, Think on these things. Meditate on these things. Praise God. And you will find folks that the joy will come in your heart. And you will rejoice. And you will be stronger. You will be better as you do those two things. Pray and praise. And that's what John Wesley did. Whenever he was fearful, he took the time out and he prayed. And he praised God for the fact that God, you are still on the throne. God, you are still ruling. And you are ruling all things well. And God, you have the final say in my life. You have the final say on this world. Praise God. And folks, as we learn to trust in the Lord, you will find our fears would be calmed. Praise God. Those stormy waters in your life, it will subside. Just as the disciples in Matthew 14, when that they found themselves in the middle of a storm, praise God, Jesus came on the scene walking on the water. And Jesus looked at the storm and said, Peace be still. And immediately there was a calm. This is what the Lord will do in your heart. This is what he will do in your mind right now. He will calm those stormy waters that are raging in your soul. And he will give you such a calm and such a peace. You will hear him say, peace be unto you. Praise God. You will have such a peace in this time of unrest. In a time that anxiety is plaguing the world. A time where fear is rampant. You will find a certain peace that passes all understanding. Because why? Because you are learning to trust in God. To have faith in God. You are moving from a position of fear to one of faith. Praise God. John Wesley further said, he said, I never have known more than 50 minutes of anxiety. He never knew more than 50 minutes of fear. Never knew more than 50 minutes of worry. He said, whenever I feel it coming on, Whenever I feel that spirit of fear and anxiety wants to get hold upon me and to overwhelm me, just taking over my mind and taking over my heart, he said, I will just close my eyes and I will thank God. God, you are still on the throne. You are reigning over everything. And I take comfort in the very fact that you are in control of all affairs of my life and all the affairs of this world, praise God. And folks, what was the result? The preacher would be calm and able to do the work that God has given him to do. So don't let faith, or fear rather, ruin your life today. Do not let fear ruin your home or ruin your marriage or ruin your peace in God. Trust in the Lord, the Bible tells us, and he will bring it to pass. That is a promise for you today. You know what David had to say in Psalm 23? And you all know this because this is one of the most popular songs in the entire book of Psalms. And David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shame with me right where you are. Come on this afternoon. You know, you say with me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou honest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God. David knew also what it was um, to experience fear. But folks, he overcame his fear by trusting in the Lord. He faced 
his bears, he faced his lions, he faced uh, his Goliath, uh, folks, and he faced them in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah! He was able to overcome. He was able to be successful. He was able to be triumphant. Glory to God. Because he knew the fact that the Lord was with him. That's why he wrote the song, Glory to God. He said, even in death, even in the valley of the shadow of death, when I feel surrounded and death wants to come and take hold of my soul. He said, even in that dark valley, he says, I will not be afraid because my God, my shepherd, the good shepherd, praise God, is with me. And I want you to know, even though you have reached to that point, um, and you might be going through a certain dark valley, a certain crisis in your life right now, folks, nobody will know about it. Uh, you are trying to them from others. But you know what you are going through, folks. It is dark. Not only dark, it seems that it is so long. It seems that there is no way out. There is no end to this crisis in my life. I'm here to tell you, folks, do not be afraid because your Lord is with you. He will be with you as you go through the dark valleys. Praise God. As you might fall into a pit, he is there. But he will lift you up. Praise God. The Bible talks about the, the Lord lifting us up from the fiery clay and setting our feet upon that rock. We sang that in Sunday school and that is still true today, praise God. Thank God for the assurance of, of comfort that we have. Thank God for the assurance of care that we have and the protection that we have from all evil, not just some folks, but all evil, whether it be internal, whether it be external, folks, we can trust in the Lord through whatever that valleys that you might be facing at this time and your family. What will carry us through, folks? I'm trusting in the love of the Lord. Amen. His love endureth forever. I'm trusting in the grace of God. God told Paul, Paul had some serious issues, of course, but God assured him in Corinthians, he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is not only sufficient for you, but it's sufficient for your family. Praise God. It is sufficient for the church. It is sufficient, folks, for this entire world. God has so much of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. It is enough for every man, woman, boy, and girl. Hallelujah. It is enough for the billions upon the planet. It is the grace of God. And the good thing about it, it is absolutely free. Praise the Lord. Not one time you're going to have to spend. Not one time you're going to have to spend. That grace is free. And as you ask God for his grace, of course the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. If you knock on heaven's door again, folks, it will be open. And says, God, I need your grace. I need your peace, dear Lord. I need your love. Folks, and I want to tell you, God is going to shower upon you. And so you will become calm. You will not find yourself being anxious and becoming frustrated. Praise God. Just allow his grace to calm your spirit this afternoon. Allow his grace to calm your fears. And you will find a greater confidence in God. A weak faith is weakened by predicaments and by catastrophes. That will happen to a weak faith. It gets weaker every day. Whereas, folks, on the other side, a strong faith is strengthened by the same. It is amazing. Amazing how God works on all the evils that may come your way. God has the ability, folks, to turn it in around. All the curses in your life, He can turn it around to become blessings. All the hardships in your life, God can turn it around and there will be such a great reward, folks. I know that I've seen that to be so true in my life. Glory to God. I've seen God just turning the tables for me. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Folks, there are times I tell you, I thought I was not going to make it. But glory to God as I continue to trust in the Lord. God just turned it around and just made me better. Praise God in the end. Amen. Never thought that I'll be worse. 
never thought that I'll be broken and can't be fixed again. But I want to tell you something. God made me stronger. God made me better as a result of my trials. As a result of my troubles and my afflictions that have come my way. God turned it around. Praise God. I am better for it. I'm stronger for it. And so you can be this evening as well too. Amen. Praise God. That's what God wants you to do. The same predicaments. The same catastrophes that come your way. Instead of weakening your faith, it can strengthen your faith. It depends on your perspective. It depends, of course, where you look and how you look. Amen. And who you look to. That's going to make the difference in your life. That's why Jesus said, praise God, to look to me. Look to me, Jesus, because I am the author and the finisher of your faith. If you look to Christ, you cannot be defeated. If you look to the Lord, you cannot be under. Praise God. You will always be above. If you look to Jesus, you will not be a tailor. But you are going to be the head. Praise the name of the Lord. Faith in God makes the difference, folks. Faith in God allows you to use your stumbling blocks. And to make them stepping stones. That's what faith in God will cause you to do. Amen. God, folks, will make you better at the end of the day. And at the end of your trials. And at the end of your dark valleys. And at the end of, folks, of your pain. At the end of your disappointment. At the end of your sorrow. At the end of your reverses in life. You will see what God will do. God will take all of those stumbling blocks that has come into your life, folks. And God will make them stepping stones. Instead of you going down, which the enemy has planned, you will be going up. And up, praise the Lord. You will see that. Your enemies will see that. Those who have been looking down at you. Those that have been casting aspersions on you. Those that have been criticizing you. Those that have been wishing you bad and wishing you hurt, folks. Those that have been plotting against you. Those that have been trying to trip you up. Those that have been trying to put a, a something in your spokes. Hello, somebody, to cause you to fall. You will see the very traps that they set for you. They will fall into it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you will be delivered. Praise the name of Jesus. That's what God will do for you today. He will take the very same stumbling blocks of the devil and place in your path today to mess you up, to discourage you. God will take those same things in. It. You're going through some financial difficulties. Have faith in God. You will see, folks, that you'll be better. Praise the Lord at the end of it. You will find a new faith. You will find a stronger faith. Praise God. You will find a shining faith. As you've been through it all, you will find strength. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what God is going to do. Praise the name of the Lord. The closing. I want to share with you a story. And so it begins like this. Rain poured down and thunder. Boom. On that night in September. In western Oklahoma, it had been quite an unpleasant evening at the nursing center. And nurses and residents alike were enjoying the cooler weather when the scream of the local tornado siren tore through the night sky, warning of impending danger. Hovering unseen in the darkness, the nurses and aides looked at each other in surprise, then quickly began moving their residents to safe rooms. One able bodied resident sprang into action, quickly pushing one wheelchair after another into the small shelter room as frightened residents tried to comprehend the sudden change of events. But after the residents were moved into the room, there was one particular person, 80-year-old resident, seeing the fears in the eyes of the frightened residents around her, stood up from her wheelchair and announced, she announced that, listen, she will lead everyone in prayer. And she proceeded to do so in the strongest voice, mustering from a frail body could produce some. 
the faith uh, filled words rang out over the bowed heads uh, of the frightened elderly group uh, but peace uh, fell over the room uh, as she prayed uh, the peals of thunder crashed through the darkness outside the building yet inside uh, there was peace because what because one saint understood uh, the power of prayer glory to god one elderly saint of 80 years old knew in a time like this uh, that she could still trust in the Lord. Uh, and instead of being governed by fear, praise the Lord, uh, she now exercised faith in God. Uh, at the end uh, of the prayer, the woman's roommate who had leaped to uh, action earlier, helping to get everyone quickly into the shelter rooms, uh, then began to sing uh, a joyful hymn. Uh, look, folks, uh, at what proceeded, praise the Lord. Uh, from prayer now, we're going into praise. Hallelujah. And soon everybody joined in. They changed the entire atmosphere. That's what we need in our country today. Praise God. We need Christians. We need folks, people can pray. And people to know how to praise and to bless the name of the Lord. Instead of hovering like cowards in a corner. And being scared folks to do anything. And to go anywhere. That's what the devil wants. Wanted a long time. He has put one over this world, but listen, the Lord will have boomerang it on him. Praise the name of the Lord. He might think he got the church and assigned the church. Now look, we are closed down and shut down. But I want to tell you something. He has something coming. Glory to God. You will see salvation of the Lord. You will see how God is going to turn the tables. Praise God. And the church, instead of being empty, is going to be filled. The church is going to be purified because it's purifying the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. The goats are being separated from the sheep, the wheat, people, the tares, from the wheat. Praise the Lord. And you will see the pure gold. Amen. You will see the genuine. So the devil might think the folks are here spinning. But God is using all this. Amen. To bring out the true church. Amen. To those that are truly called and uh, washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God is using all of this, folks. Uh, amen. To bring out that pride. Without spot and without wrinkle. Amen. Ready for the coming of Jesus and the marriage of the Lamb that's going to take place real soon. Amen. That's what the Lord is doing. See, with all of the chaos and pandemonium, God is working mightily and purifying his people and getting them ready for heaven. Are you ready for heaven? Are you ready for the trumpet that is about to sound? Amen. Praise the Lord. Our Lord makes his appearing. Folks, those who know Christ will hear his voice. You will hear the voice of the Lord saying, come up. Come up here. Praise the name of the Lord. Your work on earth is done. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. Your Jesus, amen. Folks are not looking, amen, for a remedy from this world, glory to God. Already have that remedy, amen. Already have the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. This is what the, the, the world really needs today. More than any other vaccine, the world needs uh, to be vaccinated with the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. That will save you from eternal damnation and hellfire. Praise the name of the Lord. It will save your soul from eternal torment. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Have you received it today, folks? Have you received it as I go to the Lord and I ask you to join with me in prayer right now and let us talk to the Lord. Pray with me this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your great love. I thank you for your grace that you've extended them to this world today. That we can still hear the voice of God and learn about the coming of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I repent of all my sin. I've been trusting in the wrong thing. I've been trusting in the wrong person. Now I place my faith and trust uh, in Jesus Christ uh, and Him and Him alone for the gift of salvation and for eternal life. Uh, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer, my sinner's prayer today. Father, and I receive 
receive by faith the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Savior. And for the rest of the time that I have on planet Earth, I will serve you all. I renounce fear. I renounce anxiety. I renounce the work of Satan in the name of Jesus. And I declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Lord of everything. Lord of this universe. Thank you for hearing my prayer. For saving my soul in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you for saying that prayer today. Hallelujah. Please give us a shout out and let us know. I want to encourage your brethren. Glory to God to continue this call. This week put into practice those two P's. Pray and praise. Pray and praise. Glory to God. And you will see you be calmer. Amen. You will see you be better. You will be stronger in the name of Jesus. Do not live in fear any longer. Do not be bound by the spirit of fear. Walk in faith and you will walk in victory. God bless you as I hand back to our song leader. And just reminding you, gently reminding you that Rex and I, the Lord of Tower, we'll be back here for another live broadcast. Be sure to tune in, invite your friends to listen to these lives. It will be posted up thereafter on YouTube so you can view it later on for those who are on YouTube. God bless you, Amy, would you come?